Hey channel, Fernando from SkyFi Audio. It's been a while since I did an unboxing video. Um, and when our friends at Jquoter uh, rang us up and told us they had a, a new old stock, Techniques RS 1500 US edition in stock, uh, we jumped at the opportunity. Um, so we acquired this machine uh, from them. Thank you, uh, folks at Jquoter. And um, it's just arrived. So I'm excited to share uh, this unboxing video with you. We've done a bunch of these in the past. I've done some vintage Morants um, of all sorts. I think we did a tuner at one point, I did a Luxman, um, but it's been a long time. So um, here we are. Uh, the RS 1500 is a reel-to-reel -reel machine. Uh, most of you probably know it. Uh, it's one of the better, more reliable machines built. It was made in uh, late 70s into early 80s. So chances are this machine is, is probably from right around 1980. Uh, I'm going to look inside and see if we can figure out exactly when it was manufactured. So it's unusual to see a machine like this uh, new in the box. But I think I can probably surmise a story for you as to how it came to be. Um, this is a prosumer machine. Um, it was likely to be of use in maybe a university or a campus setting, a laboratory, a recording studio for, for down mixing. At some point... Um, or a lot of these machines were used uh, uh, professionally. And if you ran an organization of some sort and you relied on the RS-1500, you probably had a couple of them in hand. Uh, these were consumable machines. They wore out over time, so it wouldn't be unlikely to have uh, you know, two in production and then maybe a couple of more machines sitting on a shelf waiting for uh, the day that you need them uh, urgently. So I suspect... It's very likely one of these machines came from that sort of scenario. And it probably, you know, moved hands a few times after that over the years, or maybe that business closed up. And, uh, and it landed to someone who knows about tape machines, and then it, uh, it made its way to us. So um, I'm going to jump right in, uh, tell you a bit about it, the RS-1500, why it's a machine that we love so much and its variations, and, uh, and go through the bits and pieces, you know, open it up as if it was just arrived new from the factory. So uh, I'm going to jump right in there. Um, but if I do, or before I do, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, I'd tremendously appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. That way we'll stay motivated to bring you these videos. So um, I'm going to jump right in and then I'm going to go over some specifications and stuff. I'm going to put the camera here, see if I can get a good view of this whole procedure. It's a heavy machine, so bear with me. I suspect I'll struggle getting this out of the box in any um, logical fashion. Uh, the box is in fairly good shape. It's, it's seen some, some wear and tear, but it's generally um, held up fairly well. Uh, they knew how to make good cardboard stuff in the late 80s or the early 80s. Uh, it's been open before. I just don't know how far open it's been. So I'm going to jump right in. Um, so opening the, the outer carton. Um, usual, usual suspects here. We've seen this stuff before. Never this completeness, but we've seen, obviously, the hub adapters before from Techniques. Uh, in this case, they're individually bagged. So, although I've seen a million of these, I've never seen them uh, come out of the bag for the first time. So, these are the plastic Techniques hub adapters. A lot of people upgrade these because they are a bit of a pain to get in and out of the, the machine. Uh, next to it, we've got the the cables that would have come with the machine, and you can tell these are brand spanking new. So they've never been uncoiled. They still have the original. So a set of RCAs for playback and another set of RCAs for record. All right, moving on, we've got the techniques, the spacers, the little rubber the real spacers that come with every machine. These often get lost, but um, they're, they're pretty necessary. Um, here's a specifier for, for 10 and a half inch metal reels. So this provide a little bit of cushioning and spacing between the metal reel and the machine. Um, moving on, this I've never seen before. This must always get lost. This must be a cover of some sort. It's still sealed, I'm not gonna open it. But yeah, it's a plastic techniques, a stereotype that cover, super cool. I know they also made a, a hard acrylic one. We had it years ago on the, on the 1500. Uh, moving on, we've got a, a manual here with some Q-tips, uh, I guess for cleaning the heads. 
this is uh, let's see if this is open or see. All right, so here is the original manual, totally intact. The operating instructions. Oh, this is neat, check this out. They show you how to power the machine with a battery pack system. I guess if you're on the field uh, doing recordings, I've never really looked at that before. Calibration of the meters, basic uh, button layout and functionality. All right, here's the placement of the reel with the hub adapter and the spacer that I discussed earlier. Some indications on how to get it all on and off. And the tape path, and I'll show you this later. The Techniques line has a very unusual tape path that's unique to the machines. And we'll go over that more closely. Basic connections for microphone, headphones, and a playback system of some sort. Obviously, they show you uh, how to connect it to other technique systems, which is pretty cool. All right, moving on to some uh, positions for bias and equalization. How to read the meters, very cool. And uh, how to adjust the playback head. Now this seems to be specific to the 1500. Yes, this is for the 1500, not the 06 or the 1700. They often share manuals, but uh, in this case, I guess they were different enough where they had unique manuals. And the description of the left side and the right side of the head. This is interesting design characteristic of this machine. Uh, as the tape path travels through the left side of the heads, it goes through a series of heads, much different from the right side. And they're usually split up into uh, two and four track capabilities. How to clean the machine with the cotton swabs and some specifications here. So let's take a look at this. Um, so forehead, two track, two channel recording playback system, uh, three direct drive motors. Um, obviously you can do the smaller reels as well. Um, 57 pounds, that's an important, it's uh, what makes this a bit difficult to move around. Uh, and then all the bias and equalization settings, NAB standard position two, uh, for Scotch 207 tape. So it looks like these machines were calibrated and biased for the Scotch tape. And that's about all the important stuff from here. So the manual, we've got a set of Q-tips. And then lastly, uh, the warranty card, how to get factory service and safety suggestions, how not to hurt yourself with a reel-to-reel -reel machine. I guess technically you could get your, your tie wrapped into one of the motors and strangled to death, but shy of that, well, I guess if you got in the bathtub with a machine, that could also be hazardous to your health, or if it fell on you, because it is quite heavy. So here it says, don't hang it on a really high shelf where it might fall on you. Don't leave it out in the sun, don't pour water on it, and don't take it to the beach. I think that's what they're trying to illustrate here, or the pool. So, very cool. All right, moving on. Um, I suspect this is gonna be a take-up rail. And hopefully it'll be a Technics brand, a take-up rail. I think I'm gonna have to put the camera down for this one. Indeed it is, a brand new Techniques branded number one. Side number one and side number two. It's a beautiful piece. Highly coveted if you're a Techniques uh, collector. To have a set of these on your machine is, is an absolute must, at least for display purposes. All right, moving on forward. Let's see, we're gonna remove the outer packing. Let's see, real table side. Real tables side, not sure what that means. I guess they're showing you how to put it back. And here, very Japanese uh, fashion, we've got some sort of strapping material holding this whole thing together with the styrofoam. So 
I'm going to go back to hands-free mode. See if I can tilt this thing and get it out. All right, did it, no one got hurt. In the back we've got some sort of spacing material. Reels table side again. This box out of the way. Okay, so much like a package, it is wrapped in fabric. So let's see if we can get this out of here. Oh, just so you know, we're probably not going to power this machine up. Uh, we're going to leave that to its new owner. Um, this is uh, obviously a collector piece, so um, we're just going to go through it. Just make sure it is, in fact, unused. Um, and when we're all done, uh, you'll see this machine up on our website, which is uh, skyfiaudio.com. You'll see... At any given point, maybe five, six hundred pieces of vintage audio equipment. A lot of it restored. So, yeah, it looks like they've got this sort of strapping method they used on this. And then to get this fabric off, or plastic. As you can see here, the feet kind of punctured through the, through the plastic bag that it's in. I am almost there. <coughs> there we are. We'll start with the back. Make sure you can see this. We've got uh, the power cord still wrapped in, in foam protectant as well. I suspect this machine has never been powered on. It's got the little band that holds it in place. All right, looking closely, serial number is SJ5830A004. I'm sure someone out there knows how to decipher that into a model number. I'm sorry, into a year of production. So um, if you do, please leave it in the comments below. We'd love to know the exact date of manufacture. 120 volt model, 50 to 60 hertz, and 120 watts, and manufactured Matsushita Electric industry in Japan, and made in Japan. So absolutely beautiful. I've never seen anything like this in terms of condition. Moving on to the front. So here's designation two track uh, 1500. So I mentioned before they made a few variations. They made a 1506, which is a four track machine uh, that could record in four track and play back in two. This one is the opposite. This one can record and play back in two and only play back in four track. And that's what this switch is for. And that's what makes this machine so capable. You can just flip to it. And this is the strobe uh, flywheel. Now uh, there's a light on here, an LED that lights up a strobe internal. It lets you know where you are speed-wise, and the slight speed adjustment is right here. Still covered in its original plastic. No signs of any use on the wheels, on the pinch rollers, and not a fingerprint in sight. 
The side panels are quite delicate, so it's nice to actually see a brand new set for the first time. We spent uh, quite a bit of time trying to refinish those and getting them looking great. And uh, this is one of my favorite parts of the machine. They've got this great stencil here for the tape path, um, illustrating how the tape goes through the various pinch rollers and heads and back to the take up rail. These usually have a light surface rust on them. Um, so obviously this one doesn't, it's absolutely pristine. I'm curious to see who the buyer will be of this machine, whether or not it'll just stay like this or whether it'll go into production. I imagine it's gonna be someone that may have a couple of machines and this is what they keep in the closet as a sort of showpiece and maybe use a different machine that's been serviced and updated for day-to-day -day use. Very cool. All right, and to give you, um, let me give you a sense of what, let's see, I think I covered, oh, the speed's uh, three and three quarters, seven and a half and 15 um, IPS, and that's settable. You can arrange that right here or select it with this uh, speed selector here. And for audio file use, you're, gonna, you're always gonna be one be looking for a machine that can do 15 IPS. That's the higher of the sort of residential prosumer speeds. Seven and a half you would use if you want to get a little bit more tape life out of your recordings. If you're making maybe a, a casual recording, something that you can listen to in the background. But for critical listening, you're going to want to have it at 15 IPS. And three and a half or three and a quarter is really just for archival stuff, voice or, you know, just archive recordings. There's the tape counter itself. It's just below 999. Must have just shifted in, in shipping. So that's about it. Now let me show you in contrast. So this is an all stock machine. Now let me show you the complete opposite of this. On the other side of our shop, we've got uh, a J quarter masterpiece. There's uh, Midnight sort of Macintosh tribute machines that they make. Um, so if you've seen in other videos, Macintosh never made a reel-to-reel -reel machine. And everyone that has a system, or a lot of people that have Macintosh systems, are looking to get every piece matching. So he recognized this need in the market and created this beautiful tribute to Macintosh, which is an RS-1500 um, made to look uh, like so that it blends with the rest of your Mac system. So it's beautiful inlays and high gloss finishes, tape covers, and we worked the meters to have, have them be a better match. You know, high gloss acrylic sides and just super quality stuff. And that's just cosmetics. You should, you'd, you'd be delighted to know all the internal upgrades, uh, tape path upgrades, bearings, you name it. These machines are absolutely taking to the next level as they should. Um, so, you know, Jay Coder takes his machines, essentially rips them apart and rebuilds them from the ground up with, um, you know, modern components, fresh rubber and consumables and, and also, he also has a bunch of upgrades available for, to improve the, the performance and the sound quality of it. So highly recommended. Um, you can pre-order a machine like this on our website. You can also check it out at Jay Coder's website. Um, we tend to have one machine at least in stock at any given time, so check in with us if you are interested. This is the 1500 variant. We've often had also the 1520, which is a higher level um, version of this that is taller, has more controls, and is more of a studio piece. So you'll see that in our website if you search for reel to reels. Um, so I think that about wraps it up. Um, I appreciate you watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, I'm sure I made a lot of mistakes during this video, so I'd love to hear from you in the comments. I take the time and try to personally answer all the comments, so if you've got something to say, if you've got an opinion or, uh, or any sort of discussion point, please leave it in the comments and I'll be sure to get to it. And uh, be sure to like and subscribe and check us out on our website at skyfiaudio.com. So check it out from Glen Rock, New Jersey. Thanks for watching, guys.